Bourbon Barkeep Lounge. My name is Curtis and this is a House Call Wednesday. House Call Wednesday is when we click a button, it tells me a number, and then it, it assigns the battle, if you will. No, it is. It is the battle. So I, I have these two blind pours next to me with just numbers on top. I sip them, I nose them, sip them. That seemed better. And then we score them. And then we also do a little bang for the buck. So if you're curious about that, stick around. Let's go on ahead and get glass A on the nose. And while I do that, why don't you go ahead and just like subscribe. Noah and I are on a journey to get monetized really as quickly as possible. Um, the, whiskey, the whiskey library is an expensive habit. Job, something, all of them. So if you can just click the button for free, that would be awesome. Class A, on the nose. Whew. I like that. It's like dipping my head in a cigar box Got with cigars in it. So you get the little tobacco, little, little cedar. That is delightful. I am a cigar guy. I don't think this is a cigar blend necessarily, but this is a humidor and I am here for it. Moving past the humidor, we got like a, like a cinnamon cherry, maybe, uh, mm, yeah. I was gonna, how, how deep of a vanilla is it? Is it like a custard? I think so, like a vanilla custard. So it goes into like, the nose is very thick. It's almost like a saturated nose to where sometimes you go vanilla, just a little sprinkle of vanilla. This one's like a vanilla custard, vanilla pudding. As this starts to open up, this is actually a, a pretty complex, deep nose to where sometimes when you start getting into those like five, seven tasting notes, scents in this case, are you fudging? This one has it. This is really nice. Has like the baked apple chips, kind of that cinnamon kind of rolled in there. Shake those things up. Love them. Very dark on the nose. I am quite excited. It's actually dark on the on the eyes as well. So then smell finished. We shall see. Cheers. I like that. I like that a lot. It's like a nice kind of heavy oak kind of coming through, but like a nice spiced sweet oak in there. Molasses, brown sugar, dark brown sugar to be exact if you're keeping track of the light or dark brown sugar notes. Whew. That's nice. I still feel like it's finishing to where proof wise, if I had to guess, very viscous, nice kind of cinnamon spice hanging on the tongue, amongst other things. Wow, that is a really good pour. It's gonna be a bit for a second sip, so this may get fast forward, I'm not really sure. Proof wise, 110, 115 maybe. This is really a really nice pour so far. Sip two, now that we kind of know what we're getting into, we've acclimated a little bit. Let's see what else we get for you. Ladies and gentlemen, sip two. That's a real treat. Really enjoy it. There's like a nice dark chocolate kind of hanging around. This is kind of my wheelhouse pour. Um, I don't know what this is, but I really hope I have a backup of it because I, I love it. Nice kind of like this chocolate covered espresso bean, a lot of oak coming through, still, I'm having a tough time pulling out any fruits, actually, because it's just this gambit of molasses and dark brown sugar. The tobacco kind of continues through, and that vanilla custard kind of continues through as well. Now, show's not over. Obviously, we need glass B, and uh, this could be lopsided, or this could be an absolute heavyweight battle that you're about ready to witness. So let's see, let's get it on the nose. Glass B now. A little bit lighter now coming off of just the absolute dark dream of a glass that glass A was 
I think anything would be a little brighter. This one does have fruits in it. I'm gonna go like a red fruit, these kind of strawberries and raspberries. Um, I can name more red fruits if you, if you need. Uh, that cinnamon is still kind of on the nose. This actually has a really nice, like a, like a cobbler crust, or like a strawberry cobbler, I guess, if you will. Nice vanilla, maybe even like a, like a toasted vanilla, or no. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, I'm gonna go, this is a dessert nose. Creme brulee on the side, a little strawberry, a little raspberry, maybe a mixed berry cobbler on the nose. I love it. God, I hope this matches the palette. Let's see. Mm. Wow. Come on. Is it my birthday week? What are these pores? I mean, the, the nose translates to the palate in a, in a great way. The bright red fruits kind of come out. You still got like this nice brown sugar. Um, I would even say just baking spice. The nutmeg, the cinnamon, it's all there lumped into this beautiful, beautiful glass. Where are the colors on these guys? Pretty dark, pretty similar too. Oh man, this is not going to be, well, I get, it's going to be a tight one. I can tell you that. This is definitely going to come down to bang for the buck because those are incredible pours. Let's see what sip two has at this point. The dessert in a glass on the nose, once again, just continues. The palate continues. Second sip, this is like going to like an old school soda fountain. You get a little like cream soda, I could see. I don't know why, did that come out weird? I'm gonna have to rewatch that back. That cream soda, so soda, or like a pop, depending on where you live. But it's like a, a nice cream soda. The finish, I could see it kind of coming into like, maybe like a root beer as well. Oh my goodness. That is delightful too. How to score these. All right, well, on the topic of scoring, I guess. So we do senses, we do experience, smell, palette, finish, all that, no price. I mean, it's just, it could be $1,000 and we're just gonna score it. We don't care what the price is. Then, part two of the scoring, we do care about price. Spoiler alert, it's bang for the buck. That one would be kind of like a, hey, this thing is $100. Does it taste like $100? Because some bottles do. I understand some people don't wanna spend $100. I get it, I don't wanna spend $100 most of the time. But when I do, I want it to taste like that. Also, does it kind of punch above $100 or does it punch above the $35 price range as well? So we kind of give maybe some of these budget pours, which if these are budget pours, sign me up. But um, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna revisit real quick, get a little water, and then we're gonna come back and score, crown a winner. That's what we do here. So stay tuned, the revisit, that was fun, obviously just for me, because you didn't see it, but these are two pours that I feel like you could really spend some time with, and I don't know what price is yet, but if these are upper tier, doesn't mean it's gonna do good for bang for the buck, but you could justify them at least, so. So there wasn't a ton more, I feel like we should revisit on them, um, it was just fantastic. These are sips that I feel like you could really dive into and pull five, seven, eight different tasty notes out of and feel confident in that, whether you're a beginner or not. Um, I do feel like these are probably in that 110 to 115 proof range. Glass A seems to drink a little older um, between just kind of that darkness and richness um, I think it's older than glass B. So for glass A, pure senses, I'm going to go mm, 85. I think that's really close to just a fantastic pour 
And at least for my palate, in terms of this kind of like chocolate and coffee and cigar humidor, this is hitting a lot of my check boxes and I, I really enjoy that pour. Glass B, boy, um, I, on the revisit, I verbally talked to myself and said, Glass B's nose is very good. I do love a good nose on a whiskey. I mean, obviously that's part of the experience. Not to say that the palate was uh, average, because it was that was great as well. At least today, I'm pretty surprised after tasting glass A first, because that's how A and B works, that glass B beat it. And I'm gonna go 87. And once you start getting into these 80s, I feel like two points is pretty substantial as well. I mean, that, that was really damn good. So I am very curious what these are. And if one of these is gettable, I would highly recommend. Let's see what price is though. All right, so now I can reveal to myself at least the prices, which is how I will do bang for the buck. Still, no labels, no age, no proof, nothing else. This is just price. What would I pay for it? I try and get into, but we'll find that out. So glass A, we have $65. Glass B, $60. Oh boy, um, I mean obviously Glass B gonna score a little better, gonna score a little better here, but at $65 for Glass A, I would, i pay a little more. I mean, depending on age, kind of depending on proof. I mean, you get, get a little more juice, if you will, a little less watered down juice. Um, I'd pay a, more. Do I feel like I got my 65? Absolutely. Yeah. If you told me that bottle was, oh man, this is always a tough one. If you told me that bottle was 75, I'd gladly pay it. So if that's the case, I get what I paid for. I would pay more. Mm, well, I'll go 73. Punches above its weight. Yeah, I like that. Glass B, scored better and cheaper. That's a real shame. That's a real shame for Glass A. Put up a fight. Glass A is not going to lose too many matchups, but Glass B, $60. I'm going to go just a solid 80. I mean, you can convince me. I'm, I would pay more for Glass B, and it's cheaper. <sighs> All right, so we have the scores on the screen. You can see Glass B won. However, is glass B gettable? Let's find that out. All right, so now I get to reveal to myself in the drop down, glass A, Knob Creek 12 year, 100 proof, one of my favorite pours that I have on my shelf right now. Who took it down? Wild Turkey 12 year, 101 proof. <sighs> Wild Turkey. I am not a wild turkey guy. Oh man. And if you've seen this channel at all, it just, it doesn't do well. I think we just did wild turkey 101, just the regular one, the 20-ish dollar one, did not do well in a blind for me. This 12 year drinks much closer to, I, I guess kind of the Russell's 13. I felt like the Russell's 13 had a little bit more meat on the bones. But that Wild Turkey 12 year does not have, if, at least today, or my palate or my mood, did not have that Wild Turkey funk that Rare Breed has, which doesn't do well for me. The Russell Single Barrel, which doesn't do well for me. So that is wild. How did I get that? Oh, okay. So the Wild Turkey 12 year was donated, sent by Fritz Baryonet. That is a beautiful human being. Uh, know him personally. He is a, God, just a beautiful human. Soul and face and biceps. I would, I would take his arms for sure. Um, before this gets too weird, thank you, Fritz. And I'll move on from your beautiful, beautiful soul and 
face and body. Um, okay, so Wild Turkey 12 year is not $60, at least not on secondary. So unless you're in a duty-free store, I don't even know if it's every duty-free store, it is not 60. Hang on, I gotta look it up. All right, quick Google. I can buy the Wild Turkey 12 year for $150 right now. Will I? Uh, well, maybe, I don't know. Depends on if my wife watches this. Um, but if it's not available for 60, and let's say I'm just out here watching a review and I'm like, wow, that sounds really good. I want it for $150. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, it's actually pretty close to that 10 to 12 year or $12 a year type of price range. So I don't think 150 is insulting if you had free shipping. That being said, it's not going to punch above 150. So I would drop bang for the buck to 57, which means in a roaring comeback, glass A, Knob 12 takes it here based off a of bang for the buck. So to be said about that. But for, what we say, $65, 70 on some shelves for a 12 year, it's pretty damn good. And I feel like the proof drinks above 100. I think, what did I say? 110, 115, something like that. So both of these, I feel like drink above it, which is great. Both of these are fantastically priced at 12 years old. I mean, if they were charging $120 for either of those bottles, I would kind of get it. So there's that. Man, that was great. I love those pours. Fritz, if you're watching, I, I could use a, a few more, if not the bottle. So thank you so much. To the others, feel free. Uh, we have a Gmail down below. Email us. We can trade you pours. You can send us pours. Could make the lounge. It's just, it's a random thing. So there's that. Like, subscribe, and we'll, uh, we'll see you on the, the flippity flop.